Now, Volkswagen is just one of many car companies making big promises about electric vehicles, and that's the world the National is exploring a whole lot more of. With growth in the technology and charging infrastructure, batteries are getting better, ranges longer, and cross-country trips even more possible. So if electric vehicles are so great, why aren't they everywhere? David Common has the answer. These are the converts, drivers who've gone electric and never plan to go back. They're quiet, they're quick, it's also a better drive. What's the t-shirt say? It says, I miss gas stations, said no EV owner ever. <laughs> you do. You own an EV, you own an EV? The Leaf. The Leaf. They're preaching to the curious, busting myths along the way. And once you drive one of those, you don't feel the difference, and uh, you enjoy the difference. Can it go as far as you need it? My husband is there in the white shirt. Yep. We kind of nicknamed him High Mileage Rob. We put a, just over 100,000 kilometers on that car in first year of ownership. Should we go meet High Mileage Rob? We hear you have a nickname. <laughs> I should be about the highest mileage uh, Model 3 in Canada. What about cost? It's cheaper to operate on gasoline. And cheaper on maintenance as well. I actually saving $200 a month. This thing is one-tenth the cost. Are there enough charging stations? There's really no real gaps, except maybe in the Midwest, and those chargers are coming on live, you know, this year. Hang out here much longer at Canada's largest electric vehicle gathering, and even the skeptical might find themselves convinced. We can produce our own electricity, and you can't produce your own gasoline. But there's a problem. Want to buy? It's not always so easy to find an EV. Can you go to any dealership and get them? No, usually they don't have them at the dealerships. It's something you got to request. How long did you have to wait for it? Five months. It's just unfortunate there's not, not enough supply to supply the demand that there is for them. Right now, of Canada's 25 million vehicles, 136,000 of them are electric. But 54% of Canadians polled say they're inclined to buy electric for their next vehicle. 10% certain about it. And there's plenty of room to grow. Only 35 out of every 1,000 cars sold in Canada now is an EV. Electric vehicles are very different, and it can take years for an automaker to build new supply chains. The batteries, for instance, are in high demand. And it all impacts how many cars are even available to send to dealerships. Makes it hard to sell them. Just ask John Yaden at this Hyundai dealership. It's tough as a consumer to walk in and say, hey, do you have one of these? Can I test drive it? Can I see the different options? And can I even buy this? That's, uh, that's not really easy right now. The orders that are being taken are booking for June and July of 2020. But you got to get that supply chain up and running. Right. There is a huge demand for this in, uh, in North America, and keeping up with that is the hard part. If it's a big shift for dealerships, imagine the change for automakers. John Axon of Simon Fraser University has been following their supply trends. You know, it's an it's a industry that's quite comfortable with the uh, gasoline-powered vehicles that it's been selling, and that's where it, most of its patents and its, and its investment over many, many decades is. And so, you know, it's a hard sell for that, those kind of companies to make a huge investment into a brand new technology that's very different than what they know. Uh, without having some certainty that that is going to be the future. The Steel Auto Group in Atlantic Canada is embracing that future. It owns 40 dealerships, four of them neighbours on this Halifax street. They're betting on electric and want to lead everyone else. Electric vehicles are the way of the future, so... You want to be on the leading edge of it? Absolutely. That means significant costs up front. Installing fast chargers, training sales staff, mechanics. Really, there's not a whole lot of moving parts, like in an electric motor and stuff, there's way less to really go wrong. Not good when many dealerships make more money on service than selling actual cars. It's going to mean a big shift in their business model. If you think about the Genius Bar at Apple, yeah. where you have more of a software update approach to, to service. Um, it does change the model, like a lot more is gonna be more on electronic fixes mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to 
Does that worry you? I mean, that, all changes. that's a business risk. It's a business risk. It's a change yeah. in, the, in the way cars are going to be sold, serviced, and that's, you know, and that's going to take time and it takes adaptation, which is why we want to get in early in the game as an auto group so that we're, we already have all that ironed out. And some would like to see that change forced now. Do what Quebec has done, for instance. 43% of Canada's EVs are in Quebec, while Nova Scotia has only 0.2% of the country's electric vehicles. Rebates are part of the reason why, but so is the law. One Quebec and a bunch of U.S. states already have, and B.C. just added. It's called a ZEV mandate for zero emission vehicle. The ZEV mandate insists through legislation that automakers sell a minimum percentage of electric vehicles. If Canada nationwide adopted the same policy that British Columbia just put into place, that alone, I'm very confident, would have the, the strongest impact increasing electric vehicle sales, not just in the next couple of years, but in the decades to come. In fact, he says, ZEV mandates are proven to get people buying even more effectively than rebates. It is a policy meant to stimulate innovation. Currently, without a strong signal to, to the automakers, to their supply chains, and to everyone in that, on that side, on the supply side, there's not really enough incentive to make big investments in making the vehicles or in selling them. Nova Scotia does not have an EV sales mandate, but Mike Curry isn't waiting. Why is it that other dealerships aren't embracing EVs the same way you are? I think a lot of other uh, dealers, maybe they're just waiting until it all comes, but we want to be ahead of it. We want to be the leaders in, uh, in offering electric vehicles, and that's why we're committed as a, uh, as a dealer group to, to make that happen. It may seem like a slow game, but much is happening. Far more models now available, more on the way soon, of all shapes and sizes, with greater ranges. Just a question now of whether you can find them. David Common, CBC News, Cambridge, Ontario. All right, let's talk a little bit more about this with electric vehicle expert Kenneth Bacor. We saw an awful lot of familiar brands, of course, in David's piece there, Kenneth, but when most people think of EVs, they do still think Tesla. Uh, how is Tesla's business model different than everybody else? Yeah, you know, great question, and thank you for having me on. I mean, Tesla has been a pioneer in the all-electric vehicle marketplace. We have to remember that their business model is solely electric vehicles. So they built their business on that, and they've been able to refine their manufacturing, their supply chain, all of the, the necessary business elements to be able to produce uh, EVs and in, in growing quantities. So they, are, they tend to be the leader, and a lot of organizations are looking to follow up with that um, and learn from what they've done. Okay, I guess that makes sense. If you're only doing one thing, it's easier yeah. to keep it going. But That's there right. have been uh, lots of other big manufacturers getting on board or indicating that they're going to get on board. How serious are they? You know, a couple of years ago, I might say they're not that serious, but, but at this point, they really are. I mean, this year alone has been a, a precedent a year in manufacturer growth. Mm -hmm. We have staggering numbers of, of dollars that are being put by manufacturers. You know, VW, up to $100 billion Canadian to retool and, and rebuild efforts for offering all electrification to uh, what they want to get to is 40% of their vehicle suite, uh, mm -hmm. fleet excuse me, by 2030. Um, we have Ford, of course, that came out with the, the Mustang Mach-E, um, and they're investing $11 billion U.S. to electrify more of their platforms. Um, uh, Hyundai, as well, has said they want to have almost 700,000 vehicles being sold every year by 2025 that are electrified. So these are unprecedented growth numbers, which means that they're starting to take this industry very seriously. So ju just quickly then, Kenneth, is it really a case of uh, demand outpa outpacing supply at this stage? Yeah, we're kind of, I believe, in that middle ground, sure. in that a bit of a gap area. I mean, there are some supply chain issues now with some of the battery uh, suppliers, and we're, we're seeing that from some of the manufacturers. Tesla is different because they insource, they've built these partnerships over the years so they have these relationships but all the other players have to go to a handful of battery manufacturers that are globally situated in order for them to ink contracts and get these uh, these uh, parts for the electric vehicles and that growth has been phenomenal so they are now uh, gearing up so that they can build more plants and increase their production lines to handle uh, future growth okay kenneth bokor i learned a lot thank you very much for your time sir Peter. glad i could help thank you Tomorrow, we'll look at the environmental issues posed by electric vehicles. 
The cathode material that helps power the battery is produced from a number of different metals, so things like nickel and cobalt and lithium. While the cars reduce emissions, the batteries that power them create their own problems. And then, what happens when the batteries just aren't any good anymore? Find out tomorrow night on The National. Time for a quick break, but up next, the UK goes to the polls.